Hola amigos, soy Jane y esto es Fincarte. Welcome friends, I'm Jane and this is Fincarte. And today we're doing some olive tree pruning. The olive prune starts immediately that the harvest is finished. Although, to be honest, we quite often give ourselves a bit of a break. Steve, tell me, what are you doing today? Well, Jane, <laughs> today I'm carrying on pruning our olive trees. The, uh, the locals reckon you should hard prune back every four years. And in between times, just take off some of the new upward growth. So this end of the finca, because effectively our olive um, harvest is split into two ends. This year I'm doing this end with a hard prune. Okay, how do you know that the tree needs pruning? Well usually it's too bushy, it's difficult to harvest as we were found out when we did it in December. The, there's very dense growth which you can't get all the olives out of and there's a lot of older um, dead wood as well which needs to be thinned out. Okay, so you're taking off the upward shoots, the new shoots that are growing upward off the branches, yeah? Old and new, mainly the upward growing ones. You want a flat top to the tree uh, with the branches hanging down, what they call the falda, the skirt. And then you have to thin out the middle as well, so the plant has got plenty of sunlight and air to grow. Okay. Now, our trees are a little bit unusual in as much as they grow in strange places out of rocks and, and things. And some of them are really, really huge. Now, the ones that are really, really huge, does that mean they weren't pruned properly years ago? Possibly. I don't know. I'm not an expert. <laughs> no, actually, we should but, say we learned how to do this since we came here. Yes. I mean... Olive trees, as they grow, they hollow out in the middle. And, and so any extra thick branches that are growing outside of that bit when they start to hollow risk splitting the tree or broken off. We've had a couple that have actually done that. So the idea is to make them a little more compact and not so tall because there's nothing worse than spending two weeks with your neck up like this beating Sorry. your ribs. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm having difficulties. Look, if you hold that... It's a media-struck cap. Yeah. Ah! Clyde, what are you doing? <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> um, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um... I can take this now. So, are you... Are you doing this all by hand with the hand saw? Mainly, mostly, yes. I like to do it by hand with the long reach, a long reach saw, which is extendable. Uh, I've got a hand saw and an axe, but I also have a long reach chainsaw as well for the thicker, more difficult branches that need doing. Okay, and what do you do with the branches that come off? Are they suitable for going on the fire? Some of them, yeah. Some of the thicker ones, uh, we um, prune off the the, um, the thin parts, cut it up into manageable pieces and store it ready for the fire. The rest, unfortunately, is not much use and just gets burnt on a bonfire. But we did mulch one year, didn't we? We did mulch one year. Unfortunately, the mulch is not working at the moment, but we did mulch one year and it took forever to mulch it and it provided um, a base layer for a compost pile that took four to five years to actually break down so yeah but there's also the other issue that I suppose if you've got olive fly um, and no bones about it everybody has olive fly to a greater or lesser extent you're not going to get rid of it or keep it under control if you don't burn them are you now the olive fly lays its, its larvae and eggs in the actual olive fruit so this time of year, there's nothing for them to... Oh, well, there are a few that There's still dropped. a few so olives not, left on the tree. It's not actually... So it no. doesn't really matter if you don't burn. No. It's, oh, not okay. like, it's not like blight on tomatoes or anything like that. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Right, well, let's let's film you doing some work. Oh, oh well, yeah, I'll get back. To I'm going to have to put this cat down. <laughs> yeah. These are what, called, what are called water shoots. What, the, the upward? Yeah. Like suckers almost. Yeah, suckers come off the bottom of the trunk. And these ones growing up in the branches, they're called water shoots. Oh, okay. But ones that have been left from previous years, for example, this here, this one must have been a water shoot at some point. At some point, yes, obviously. You... And nobody cut it off. Well, if it's growing down like this, it's preferable. So you leave okay. it and then let it. But the likes of those up here, there. Here yeah. and here. Yeah. These are no good. Are you going to take them so off? We'll we'll be taking those off. Okay. And I can see what I'm doing. It also encourages new growth as well. But there's no quick way of doing this though, is there really? I mean, even with mechanical... Well, it's, it's, it's quicker with the chainsaw, but it's noisy and smelly and, and one slip and you get rid of something you didn't mean to get rid of. But it's this way, I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And there's no rush. Now, if, for ex if say, for example, you don't get them all done this year, is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. Um, it's easier to get them done in one go, because then you know where you are. Um, all it means is come harvest time, it will just be difficult and dense again. Okay. You can see there's dead wood here. But there's also what looks like dead wood, and then there's a bit of new growth on the end. So you just have to try and thin this out as much as you can. The way this has been cut last time, it shouldn't have been cut off like that. don't think it was me, but it could have been. And now this branch looks like it hasn't been done for a while. I'm going to show you some of my favorite trees. That one there, that's that's before it's haircut. And um, it's one of my favorites. Look at the trunk. Actually, it looks like more than one tree, but it isn't. You can see the trunk hollowed out. But blimey, the, uh, that, I mean, that must be, what, 10 feet across at the yeah. bottom. But as those new shoots grow and you cut them off, it sort of nobbles it and it grows further out. You know, they would all be little sticks at one point. But gradually they've cut back all the new shoots that grew here and they've developed into this solid base. And they leave one main branch and two or three, three to four, some that branches. one, the one you're just pointing to, this one. that one is leaning so far over. Is that going to be a problem? Well, that's what we're going to be careful of. It, or everything's growing out this way, and if you let it go too far, I don't think it's going to break off from here, although you can see it's starting to hollow here as well. The main trunk's okay, but if it gets too far, there is a risk that it can pull it over. Hmm. Well, split it. As it starts to hollow, it could split. Yeah, because look, it is hollowing yeah. out down here. Yeah, there are other trees like that further up as well. Mm.
part of the Finca down here is what we call the meadow. It's the only place where it actually looks as if the trees were planted by humans in a row. So it, it's the closest thing to what could be called an olive grove. A lot of our trees are most definitely not planted by human hand. Let me show you what I mean. It's growing out of a rocky mound and clearly uh, nobody in their right mind would plant an olive tree there. It's an opportunistic seed sowing and the result is actually a very productive tree. We uh, we get loads of olives off that tree and it it's amazing. I don't actually understand how it can continue to produce so well when the trunk is it's totally hollowed out and it's just, it's crazy. And this is rock. And you can see here where it's actually been growing between two pieces of rock and we've had to cut this off because, yes, Clyde, it just wasn't productive at all. Uh, these bits here. Whether it's the same tree or not probably is. The other thing that is a complete pain in the butt is this stuff. Clyde, will you get out of my way? This stuff here. That's wild asparagus. We get a lot of it and it's got to be taken off because it's so sharp, the thorns on there are just absolutely evil. This tree here, that's a whole moak. Uh, we have quite a few of those on the Finca as well. Uh, they are protected here and you're not allowed to cut those down. There's another one beside it. You have to ask permission to prune those as well. I mean, this one is looking a bit precarious, so I have a feeling that at some point it's going to take this bank down with it and basically just hit the deck. But what can you do? That's a neighbor's, a neighbor's car there. He's obviously off in his field, seeing to his trees. There's another fire going over there, someone else pruning. Tis the season. Here's another cute tree. This, at some point, was a much bigger tree. And we do get olives off this one, although not that many. You can see there's a large rock growing behind it and another one to this side. And it's actually, I mean, this has been done by human hands, not ours. This has been built up here around the base of this tree to stop it, I suppose, falling over. But at some point it just got too big and it's been, it's been chopped. I guess to save the tree. Oh, it's quite severe, isn't it? Yeah, it won't do any harm. So that's the good thing about it. Yeah, but it doesn't look exactly pretty. Well, I don't mind them like this. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. We don't do this for money. Uh, we don't get anything out of it other than the enjoyment of interacting with people who like the same things we do and are interested in what we do. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Adios amigos. Happy pruning.
Oh, 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 oh,